So could you introduce yourself, please? I'm Marcus Kummer. I'm Vice President for Public Policy of the Internet Society. Now, Marcus, this isn't your first IGF. You've, uh, you've been to quite a few of them, if I'm... Sorry. I've been there since the beginning, yes. I was the executive coordinator of the IGF and uh, prepared the first five IGF meetings, and this is my second IGF meeting as a participant. Now, my question for you is, how do you see the IGF uh, from the, the Secretariat's point of view and now going to the other side to, uh, for, to internet, from Internet Society? How is that different? Or are there any differences for you in that? Uh, it's noticeably different, yes. When you're in charge of the Secretariat and you have the permanent stress to make sure everything works right. And uh, as the Secretary of the Conference, I did not really have the opportunity to participate in workshops. I was always up on the podium sitting there for every session, so I didn't really see that much of what's happening outside. Now, as a participant for the Internet Society, I was heavily involved in a number of workshops. I had uh, speaking roles, I moderated two workshops, and I must say they were all very interesting, and I find it much more enjoyable to actually to be able to engage in substantive discussions rather than to have to make sure that everything works okay and prepare a chairman summary of the meeting. So it is a quite a different uh, experience. And obviously the IGF has evolved quite dramatically since Athens. Athens was the first meeting. We did not know how it would turn out. We did not know whether people actually would be interested. But we were surprised to see that we filled the room with up to 800 participants. And there were many more than we had expected. I think we had, you know, we had more than a thousand participants then. And had workshops, maybe 30, 35 workshops. Uh, so that was also much more than we had uh, originally anticipated. But people were still very nervous in Athens. They mistrusted what would come out of it. They were nervous that they would be captured, that one particular group would try to impose their position. Uh, and it was tried very hard to make sure that every session would be very balanced, that all stakeholders would be represented and all different views would be represented on one of the many issues. And then via Rio, Hyderabad, uh, Sharm el Sheikh, Vilnius, people get to know each other, they got used to the format. And now here, looking at the uh, event, you, you feel that people are really quite comfortable with this format, which is an open discussion forum, there's no decision making involved, so, and they begin, or they have begun to listen to each other, and they talk to each other, and I heard more than one say, yeah, I've not changed my opinion, but I understand better where you come from, or I changed my opinion a little bit, but not my position completely, so this is very helpful. So can, maybe you can just touch a little bit about on the idea of multi-stakeholderism and the significance of that. You've kind of touched a little base about hearing the different viewpoints and whatnot, but why is multi-stakeholderism so important? Well, it is basically no one stakeholder group can do it alone. Governments, uh, they don't have the technological know-how to understand necessarily the technical the implications a decision may have on the technology. At the same time, engineers may not have political, uh, may not know the political implications the technology may have, so the dialogue is important. Business, of course, is important, but they are the drivers. It's to a large extent business driven in the development of the internet. And civil society, lastly, is also important as a watchdog. They have strong advocacy groups on issues such as human rights, privacy, and they need to watch what governments are doing. Governments, by definition, they want to regulate, they want to impose their position, and sometimes they don't think of unintended consequences. There, It is good that you have civil society watchdogs that actually point out what could be bad if governments actually uh, enact uh, any given policy. So no one single group can do it alone. I think 
possible uh, action can only emerge from a uh, dialogue of all the stakeholders. Now, the Internet Society hosted a pre-IGF event on enhanced cooperation. Could you maybe touch upon that and maybe just uh, compare and contrast the differences between multi-stakeholderism and enhanced cooperation, or how they're related? Yeah, well, enhanced cooperation was one of the outcomes of Tunis, and it's a term full of creative ambiguity. Uh, the language negotiators found in Tunis allowed everybody to claim victory. So they, in other words, you can read into it what you want, depending on your perspective. Uh, there is one, I think, one paragraph which is clear that requires all relevant organizations to produce performance report, but the rest, yes, we have to enhance cooperation. Our interpretation was always it's enhancing cooperation within organizations, every organization needs to be better, and between organizations, and we as Internet Society think we are doing this. We have become observers in a number of intergovernmental organizations from the UN, ECOSOC to WIPO. We have an observer role in the OECD, so that's enhancing our cooperation with other organizations. We are going to be observer in the Council of Europe. We have participated as observers in various regional conferences preparing the World Conference on International Telecommunication. Now, others see that as a paragraph that would institute maybe a new institution or a new process. We don't see it that way, but as it doesn't go away, uh, we thought, let's have an event to discuss this, and we did host this event. It was basically came out of a meeting last May of the Commission on Science and Technology for Development, when there was a deadlock on this precise issue. There was a proposal to set up a working group to deal with this. We don't think this is necessary, but we did not exclude the possibility, but we insisted, like others and also like the governments, uh, some governments, that it should be a multi-stakeholder working group if ever it would be set up. But this should only be done as a result of a process of a mapping exercise to look at actually what is the problem we want to address. Uh, the deadlock was then happened because some countries did not want to uh, subscribe to this compromise that was emerging. They said no, the working group should be government only. That made the negotiations collapse. So we thought it would be worthwhile getting together again and discussing again what we wants to discuss. There was a South African participant who said, talking about talking, that's what they did after apartheid, and I think it's quite a good description. Before you actually engage in a formal process, you really ought to know what you want to address. And uh, that has been taken up also in various sessions, and there is a strong possibility that it will come up again. It will maybe even be in a general assembly. Uh, definitely again in the next uh, session of the Commission on Science and Technology for Development. Again, we are willing to talk. We are not excluding the setting up of a working group, but at this stage we don't think it will produce uh, much uh, in terms of results. One final question for you. What is your hope for the future of Internet Governance and where do you see the forum from now on? Well, I think... Uh, the forum is here to stay. I mean, the issues related to uh, internet governance are not issues that will go away. They are complex issues and the fundamental uh, tension between the internet as a borderless technology and an international system that is built on national borders will remain. So, and we have not found a solution yet. Now, there are organizations for each of these issues. When you go for intellectual property, you go to the World Intellectual Property Organization. When you talk about trade, it's the World Trade Organization. But none of these organizations have multi-stakeholder processes. So it's very unlikely that these organizations are able to come up with viable solutions. And here, the IGF can play a vital role in 
preparing decisions that are taken elsewhere. It will not make the decision, but it can shape the decisions. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Pleasure. We've got the human right.